Pastor Amen. Today the church is giving us a reading of the man born blind. And if you heard all the readings, and if you heard from the Vespers and men, in the Pauline epistle, all the readings are directing our attention and pointing us to see that Christ himself is life. Christ himself is eternal life. If you hear from Vespers, John chapter 5, Christ says, You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. But you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. And then in Matin it says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. And then St. Paul says in the epistle to the Romans, For of him and through him and to him are all things to him be glory forever. Amen. And then the Catholic epistle, St. John the Beloved says, And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. The church wants us to focus on Him being the source of life, on Him being everything. This gospel passage that we hear in John, John chapter 9, the healing of the man born blind, is the reading that we hear during the rites of baptism. During the prayers of baptism, this is the gospel that we read. It is important to understand what happened to you at baptism. That you can understand how it is that you can be illuminated like this man was. That your eyes would be opened. On the day you were baptized is the day that you were married to Christ. It was the day that you were betrothed and espoused to Christ. St. Paul says, I betroth you to one spouse that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But before we speak about your marriage to Christ, you have to understand where it is you were before this marriage. Who it was that Christ chose to be married to. Before you were baptized, you were ugly because of your sin. You were shameful. You were disgusting. And you're looking at me and you're saying, Abuna, take it easy. I'm not talking about you, but I'm talking about the condition of your soul. The condition of your soul was hopeless. And it was shameful to look at. But Christ in His goodness looked to that shameful soul and decided that He wanted to marry you. He chose you, not you chose Him. Do you understand that you've been married to the Most High God? Do you understand the condition that you were in and that when you were baptized, the glory that was bestowed upon your soul, the glory that you should be living in, our ugly, filthy souls have been transformed into something glorious. It is important that you understand that you are the bride of Christ. Sometimes when we talk about maybe being the bride of Christ, it might be a generic term or just a, a phrase that is commonly used throughout the Bible. Know that you are His wife. You are the wife of the Lord. And you must act in every way knowing that He is with you everywhere. That since you were baptized, Every step you take, every place you go, Christ is with you everywhere. Whether you like it or not, He is there because you have been married to Him. Understand that you are now royalty. That St. Paul says that when you were baptized, as many as who have been baptized have put on Christ. 
you have been you have put on a royal glorious heavenly robe if today you became a queen or a princess or a prince or a king you would walk around thinking that you are deserving of honor because you are wearing this glorious garment you should understand that nothing should stain this garment this is the most holy garment that you have been dressed in this is something that you should walk and you should ponder on that I have been made a royal queen or king married to the most high God this robe is a glorious robe and you must carry yourself as though everywhere you go you are carrying this robe this robe which is de described as Christ himself you have put on Christ do you honor your position in him do you honor the fact that you are married to the most high God do you carry yourself every day as the bride of the Most High King? The church has chosen this passage to be the reading during baptism. That your eyes would be open to see what it is that you are living as. And I'm going to describe to you some of the rites that we go through during the sacrament of baptism. Before, do you honor, do you honor that body that has been sanctified by Him? Do you treat your body as the body that belongs to the heavenly groom? That you are the one that is going to enter as the bride into the king's chamber? Do you carry yourself in this way? when you were baptized you must understand that it is because we were baptized that we must avoid all evil all temptation all wickedness that we must flee from it because we ourselves have been made into heavenly beings you were given new eyes for your spirit New eyes for your heart. St. Paul says that faith is the evidence of things not seen. You entered into the baptismal font in faith. That you would be given eyes to your spirit to see heavenly things. So many of God's people every day are walking only with their carnal eyes, with their fleshly eyes. No longer with spiritual eyes. Seeing that you yourself, seeing the robe that you are wearing, seeing the kingdom or the palace that you are standing before, the throne that you are standing before, seeing that you are the bride, the spouse of Christ. You are Christ's spouse. Those eyes were given to you on that day of baptism. In the rites of baptism, one of the first prayers that is prayed is an exorcism. Abuna blows on the one who is about to be baptized and says, Come out, you unclean spirit. And of course, Abuna says it silently because no mother wants to see Abuna blow on their newborn beautiful baby and say, Come out, you evil spirit. Abuna says it silently, but it is a prayer of exorcism. It is the preparing of your body, of your soul, because the king is going to dwell in you. He is going to live in you. Your heart has been prepared and evil has been cast out of it on the day of your baptism. What fellowship does light have with any darkness? But unfortunately, we throw ourselves sometimes back into the darkness. Maybe it's the TV shows that we watch, or the movies that we watch, or the songs that we listen to, or the jokes that we tell or we tolerate. Maybe it's the places that we find ourselves going to. Maybe it's bars or shisha bars or whatever they may be. 
the day you were baptized, you were cleansed and made most holy before God. And you were made a beautiful bride. Though you were filthy in your sin, God chose you that He would be married to you. How can we take ourselves and throw our bodies and our minds into filthy things? Remember, this exorcism that was once done from you. Imagine if you were demon-possessed and somebody cast out a demon from you. How you would carry yourself for the rest of your life. You would understand what great wickedness or what misery it would be that you became the dwelling place of evil. On the day of your baptism, that rite of exorcism was performed on you. And then you or your mother stood before, faced the west, and renounced Satan three times. You renounced him and all his evil works and all his despicable worship and his service. And when you said that, the angels that were present at that sacrament carried from your tongue or from, the to- from your mother's tongue these words up to the glorious throne of God and recorded them in the book of life. That you renounced Satan. That you were no longer going to have anything to do with him. Is it still the case? Do we still renounce Satan and say, I renounce you, I renounce you, I renounce you. I have nothing to do with you or your ways or anything that is not heavenly. And then you, you say, I accept you, O Christ. And I enter into your service. And when you did that, you were entrusted with glorious riches in Christ, spiritual gifts. You were given the most precious gift, His Holy Spirit. You accepted His service. Is it still the case? Is it still the case that you are walking and you are still enlisted in His army fighting that battle, fighting evil? Fighting temptation because you are the bride of Christ. You were enlisted in His army to be strong in the Lord and the power of His might, to fight against the wiles of the devil. I pray that we never forget this garment of baptism that we are given. When you accepted Him and you entered into His service, He wiped away the past and He remembers your sins no more. And then you were immersed into the baptismal font. And it was by the hand of Christ. You know, Abuna doesn't say, I baptize you. He says, be baptized because you are being baptized by Christ. You are dying with Him and it's and the old nature, and you are resurrected, and his image is renewed in you. That when the devil looks to you, he says the image of your creator. Imagine if the demons, the demons could look to your face and see the image of your creator. What glorious life we should be living. What heavenly victory we should be experiencing. That we ourselves died and resurrected with him in that baptismal font. And then you were anointed with Mayroon, which is the holy oil that fortifies your limbs and your senses to protect you away from, to protect you from the fiery darts that the devil wants to shoot at you, to destroy you. You have been protected by this most holy chrismation your body has been sanctified and fortified you were led into the arena to be an athlete of Christ to fight that battle to run that race with your eyes fixed on that heavenly prize and then either your parents or your godparents heard some commandments course that you should be taught 
all the ta- teachings of the church and that you should be fasting Wednesdays and Fridays and all the fasts of the church. But then it says, and you should not let your children go where evil dwells. Can you think of all the places that you approach where evil dwells? All the things that you tolerate in your life that are places where evil dwells. And those who break those commandments, it will be, they will be judged. Okay, maybe you protect your child from going to these places, but what about you yourself? How much more of the judgment will be upon us? Let us remember who we have become. We have been espoused, we have been married to the Most High King. You're saying, Abuna, this was 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years ago. This is old stuff. Maybe I spoiled my garment already. But that garment is renewed. A second baptism is that sacrament of repentance and confession. I pray that in this upcoming fast, we would enter into a season of true repentance. Saying, I hate all evil and I want to leave evil and I want to dwell with Christ. I want to hold him hand by hand and I never want to leave him. You're saying, that I'm serving. I'm doing what I can. But I wonder if we lost that zeal. If you lost that zeal that when you first made that decision that you were going to walk with him. You remember how fervent you were in your prayers. How fervent you were, you wanted to stay up late and you wanted to fast. And when fast came, you said, Kurosena went to Tayyibin. It's time to fast. Now it's you. Who wants to fast? Another 55 days. I am so daddy. It shouldn't be like that. It should be Kulusena went to Tayyibin. It's not black days. They are days of glory in which your garments are restored back again to heavenly garments. In the midnight watch we pray and we say, give me a fountain of many tears that your tears would wash away your sins. Do you mourn over your sins? The things that when Christ took you from being so filthy and he chose you, that you would be the bride of Christ. And then we stain that garment again. Haram. Haram that we come to that point and we count it as No big deal. You were the bride of Christ. Imagine how beautiful that bride is on that heavenly day. Let us restore that garment of baptism. In this season, with with the sacrament of repentance and confession, I pray that we could return to God with that same passion, with that same zeal, that I would be wholly devoted unto Him. Can we do this? Can we do this in this upcoming season? This is why the church chose this reading. That your eyes would be enlightened, that you would again have the eyes of faith to see the glorious things, to see your own garments, and to see the glorious condition that God has brought you into from such a filthy place. Let us pursue that life of holiness. Let's throw ourselves into this fast in rejoicing and in joy. And say, Kulu Seno into Tayyibin. Our garments are going to be restored again to heaven. Let's take this fast as a true season of repentance. Restoring that garment that God has given us. And glory be to God forever. Amen. Blessed are they.